Hi guys, it's Mita King, and I'm joined with Miniland333, who has the Super Mario Bros. world record. Hello. He, his record, 4 minutes, 55 point pi seconds. And, <laughs> and, he's, and we're going to watch this video together, and uh, he's going to explain the difficult parts and the stuff that's uh, impressive that he might need to explain. There's things like frame rules in this game. Before we go, don't forget to give him a follow on YouTube. Miniland333, Twitter and YouTube. Alright, so we're going to get right into it now. <clears throat> so, what you were saying earlier about frame rules is the most important part of this room, run. So, each level runs on a 21 frame cycle, meaning you can only gain or lose time in 21 frame increments, or essentially a third of a second. So, one example of this is in 1-1, one -one, where you have to play basically as fast as possible, including a flagpole glitch that you see here where you do a very precise series of inputs, and the flag doesn't come down, skipping parts of a cutscene. So is that frame perfect, like, where you hit the flagpole without making it go down? Because I've done that as a kid by accident, and very rarely, but I, obviously that's very rare. So is that like a frame perfect input? Yeah, there are <clears throat> multiple quote-unquote frame perfect inputs. I say frame perfect because... While they're precise, if you mess something up, you can usually back it up, but it, it's very tight. <laughs> okay, so is it um, only a one-frame window on, like, World 1-1, for example, or most or most stages? 1-1, one, one, you have to play the level within four frames of perfection, but that's much easier said than done because of the underground section where you got to get on top of a series of blocks and make your way into a pipe <laughs> with some very tricky, precise movement. So, on top of then having to do the flagpole hmm. glitch afterwards. So if you're actually slightly slow by like two frames on one one, is that still the exact same as a perfect one one, or is it just still two frames slower than a perfect one one? If you are two frames slower than a completely perfect one one to the frame, you'll still match that same frame rule because there's that bit of leniency. Yeah. So, so when you go in the one two, when you go in the one two, is it this exact same frame you start on? Yeah. Or, or you're not at a, a disadvantage. No, you start on the exact same frame. Literally, from power on, it will be frame whatever each time. Okay, so even a sloppy 1-1 one -one is still the same as a perfect 1-1, one -one, essentially. Yeah, Okay. which is why up until... For the first three levels of the game, it's you kind see of free. I'm exactly tied. It's kind yeah. of free for you. It's free for, free for a speedrunner, basically, by, compar well. <laughs> by, compar by comparison to the other levels. Like, the real challenge starts at, those, the, at, at other levels. Yeah, 1-1... One -one it's really hard, but at the top level, it's not. It's nowhere close to the hardest level. It's just yeah, standard well, at this point. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't want to say easy, but I meant easy relative to the other levels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so one one, the easy level. Because <laughs> jump room nerves are one thing, but and that a uh, flagpole glitch, you basically have to. Every time there's a flagpole, you basically have to do that frame perfect thing I, I at the see, end. I don't know if anyone yeah, and that happens three times in this room. So you have to be frame perfect on all three flagpoles, basically. Yeah, when your heart's going very quickly later on. Anyway, 1-2 is where the fun really starts. You have, I would say, maybe the second or third hardest trick in the run. First of all, you have to play the level without slowing down, and then you do a pipe clip here to get into the warp zone, saving again one third of a second. Fun, funny story. I actually, I actually, I've done this same cl uh, clip on my own, like like a long time ago. I, I was just messing around. Like I was just, I didn't do it by, on my own by accident. But I, I watched the video of this back in like I don't know, like 2012 or some time. It was like a super long time ago, like in the brawl era. Oh. Really? And then I got, I, I did it. Uh, I like, I was big Mario, and I just like ducked into like one of the areas. It was either one of the areas on this green pipe, and I actually oh, got yeah. in like my first ten tries <laughs> just by standing, at, just watching a video and seeing what what they did on the screen and i just kept trying it and i was like oh the first time i did it it was so cool but then i think i got into like minus world or something instead of the the pipe or i don't remember what, what i did but I, I think there was one time i got in a minus world and one and another time when i didn't yeah there's the minus world is a very famous glitch in this game and you see if you just do the clip and then run in that first pipe you see that you'll go to the minus world so i have to intentionally go a bit further in the warp zone to make the white text appear which you'll see yeah. here, where it says "Welcome to Warp Zone." So if you and didn't, only then well, it will take you to World Four. So if you stopped around here, it'd be minus world. But if you go all the way to here to spawn this text, which obviously happens because they're expect the game's expecting you to be up here. Um, so you know, this text starts when you get around this area. 
Um, yeah. So you have to go and trigger that. Otherwise, you go into minus world. And that's why you have to run over there. Because I, I yeah. remember minus world. And then there's like a few minus world levels. And I'm, I'm like swimming in air and stuff. There, there's a bunch of it's funny stuff. So if they go all the way back there and then go to the pipe. Now we're at 4-1. Yeah. 4-1? Four 4-1 four one. Four one for the most part, as a beginner level, is known for being really easy because you can just run through, hold right. The jumps over these plants look pretty menacing, but you have around a 10 frame window to get over them. Oh, that's free. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, hip, the hitboxes. Things, it's pretty lenient. I remember the hitboxes are really small in the plants. Yeah. Oh, and then you slow do down a, here. Another flagpole glitch here. You slow down here, I noticed. Oh, yeah, the slowdown, that's actually a setup to get the flagpole glitch. So, because that trick is so precise, it's down to a scale of subpixels, which are measurements, I think, a sixteenth of a pixel. And yeah, I actually know be... about that. I actually know about the yeah. subpixels. Want to hear so... a funny story on why I know about subpixels? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. So when I was uh, five years old, I was a uh, I kept I was a five I was five years old in my room, and I saw this le level. It was I think it was three dash three where I had these. There was like these three moving platforms, and I kept oh, trying yeah. to jump over the flagpole repeatedly. When I was like five years old, and I was like I just wanted to make this happen no matter what. So I kept trying all these different combinations of ways, and then I, I finally got it. And then, and then later, I tried to do it on my stream like a year ago, and I was small Mario, and I couldn't, and I couldn't do it, and I couldn't figure out why. And then a few days later, I learned that the, the only reason it doesn't work is because even if you're perfect down to the subpixel, small Mario can't do it, but big Mario can because he can be like further off the platform when he jumps. Oh, really? Yes. I, I never knew that. So I, that only actually... big Mario can jump over the 3-3 three, three flagpole, and it, and, that... and it comes down to subpixels. Dude, I remember... Maybe about a year ago, I was trying to get over the flagpole with that elevator with Small Mario. I remember. Yeah, you can't. And I, I was like, yeah, I was like, why can't I do this? Am I just bad? Yeah, I thought I was bad too. And then I realized, okay, so not only the platforms have to be in the perfect spot, you also have to be frame perfect. And in even being Big Mario and frame perfect, that's not good enough. You also have to be lined up to the sub pixels in order for it to work. Oh wow! So you have to be frame <laughs> well, perfect, and you. you have to be frame perfect and lucky. <laughs> basically at the same time so I, that, was, that was like the cra craziest uh, childhood story i had for, for like this game basically back then but that's uh, be because of that and because of me trying it a year ago on stream and not being able to do it and learning more later i then i learned about oh it's sub pixels that makes like now i understand because you know pixels yeah. is, it's what you see on the screen but that's uh, each pixel you see is only one sixteenth of what's actually going on in the game that's pretty interesting yeah not everybody knows about that it's, it's, it's interesting to understand so yeah, why did you slow down uh, back here then? Um, so, what happens if you don't do the slow down? The way flagpole glitch works, you're getting as far to the right as you can without landing on top of that block. Then you press left to clip inside the block at the base of the pole and jump into it. And for some reason in this game, I, I don't know why this is a thing, but it's, it's programmed in. If you grab the pole low enough, it will skip the animation. That's like hardly even a glitch because it's just programmed into the game. Interesting. But by doing that slowdown, the specific series of inputs, you are one subpixel from landing on top of that block. So it's that trick is so precise that even for a task, you can only be within about half a pixel of that block. Damn. So. Another question I have, you slow down. Does that not make you grab the flagpole slower? Or does it actually um, not change the result at the, end of the, at the end of the round? Well, you grab it slower by the frame, but again, because of frame rules... Because of frame rule, it doesn't still, matter. So yeah, you're still you starting... Still manage on, to, yeah. You still manage to get the fastest cycle there. Okay, so basically, it's not the fastest 4-1 to grab the flagpole, but that doesn't matter because when... 4-2 starts, you start on the fastest frame. So then it just comes down to which one's easier and more consistent. Yeah. Okay. And what's, that interesting that sense. Is that, what's interesting is up to this point, into 4-2, we actually tie the task. It's not possible, mm -hmm. even theoretically for a person playing above any human level, not possible to get any quicker than this into 4-2. All right. Yet. So this is, <laughs> <laughs> this is the fastest known human or task way to get to this point.
of, yeah, of the level the by the time you start on 4-2. I don't actually know what that's mm -hmm. meant to say, and I don't have the time to decode it. Very optimized game so far, compared, compared to every other game. So 4-2, the most infamous level of summoning yeah. Salt Christened it. Um, you have to do a wrong warp here. Usually you would go up a vine to get to the warp zone and warp to ward 8. Instead you do this oh, wall clip. <laughs> um, wait, wait. Wait, 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 say that again. Boom, boom. <laughs> so what, what is going on here? So what you have I've seen to do, this tons of times. I heard to, it's complicated. To get into the warp zone, you need to push Mario on the screen a few pixels forward. So you see at the start of the level, if you pause, just before the clip, he's under the 7 when he starts running in 37 of the coin count. If you just pause about here. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> um... He's, you see he's underneath the 7 of the 37 in the coin count. Okay. Whereas, once you do the clip, you'll notice it has 39 coins, and he'll be sort of underneath the W and world. Yeah, he's more to the right. Yeah. And he's what not this centered, because the game wants to center Mario, but you use a glitch to make the game no longer centered. Like, normally you would expect the camera to move with him, but for some yeah. gl glitchy reason it doesn't, because the game You're doesn't know what's going on. The you're pausing the camera briefly while you do this, pushing Mario forward, and this allows you to trick the game into taking him to the wrong destination in the warp pipe, so it's a wrong warp. And the reason why this works is because instead of using Mario's position, it uses the camera's position, which has frozen. Um, and this trick... This trick okay, is... Okay, what, what, um, <laughs> I've seen this stuff, I've never really studied it. So you hit the vine, and you, usually that vine takes you to the cloud, the cloud world. I remember when I was young, you, you yeah. hit a block here, block here, and then vines to go to cloud world. But uh, but and then you just go down this pipe, and then for some reason, you're up here. <laughs> so what, what is that? Wrong wall. Um, so the game can only load in one destination at once for it to take Mario. It, it doesn't say if you go up the vine, you go to the warp zone, or if you go in the pipe, you go to the coin cache. It just says, when the screen is scrolled this far, you will go to the warp zone. But by doing that clip, you're making him go to the right, but the screen just is enough. moving. That tiny yeah. little bit of movement, What? so if that tiny little bit of movement was not, not happening, or that movement was not great enough, then... uh. It wouldn't have loaded the room. So basically, yeah. like... And you have gone to the underground. So like and that's interesting, in this run, I had I stopped one pixel further to the right on this pipe, run would have been dead. I wouldn't have gone to warp zone. So if you were one pixel more to the right, then you wouldn't yeah. have, would, would not have even succeeded in, go, in, go, in uh, getting to the right room, and you would have had to reset. Yeah. Just by being Which one, one makes... pixel more to the right. Which is what makes the 4-2 clip specifically really hard. You have to balance going quickly and playing as aggressive with also gaining enough positioning to actually get you into the pipe. You need to find a super a super precise middle to... ground. Yeah. So this was as good of a 4-2 as you could want. And the TAS actually saves one frame rule over this, but it's the only time save that humans just have never done. So a human has point. never done it even once, ever. No. Not even on done individual attempts. Nope, never. So Although, if you do that, that's, guy, his, that's his own video. <laughs> if you if you yeah. succeed if you succeed once. Yeah. Although a guy called Niftsky, who's really good at this game, he was the former record holder, the one that I beat, and he's insane. Um, he got one frame from the faster four two frame rule, full level in an individual level room. Yeah, but since it wasn't. Good and it, that was still not good enough, and it's still the same as tying everything else for, on a practical sense. Yeah, it tied the four two in this room. Yeah, because despite being a lot faster. because it only goes in. Yeah, despite being way better, it was just one frame off. So the so nope, same same end result. at The end of the day. Yeah, that sounds the that sounds like the most that sounds like the thing that like is going to be optimized at the very very end after everything else is optimized. Yeah, a lot of people. I, bear in mind, there's a reason why that 4-2 frame rule hasn't happened. It's so, so difficult. The task I've is, tried only it, task has done it. Insane. Yeah. But, I don't know, a lot of people will tell you that it's never happening on runs, but it's, I don't know, I find it kind of foolish to say 
this one thing won't happen, because you know someone will go for it someday. Someone has to go for that. Well, there's a difference between it ever happening once by a human and the one time it happens also having everything else perfect in the entire run making that the world record. <laughs> I don't know, people... I, I could see someone being insane enough to go for that, though, despite it being so stupid. So that's probably the last thing that will ever be done. Yeah. In, in Mario Bros. speedrunning for this game. Yeah, I, I don't envy the person that goes for that. Alright. I lost two frames, so we'll see. I, I say I lost two frames there, but again, because of frame rules, um... It was still tied into 8-1. I saved one frame rule over my PB, and this is just standard 455 pace here. So are you, uh, is this the best you can do for on a human level to add 8-1? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, you could save that 40 frame rule, but other than that, this is perfect up until here. Well, you can't, you can't say you can save the 42 frame rule if it's never been done by a human. <laughs> so based on what's done by humans, this is the yeah. best you can do humanly known at this moment to 8-1. Yeah. Okay. It was so, 8 1? Um, I'll talk about this at the end, but 8 1 is probably going to be the next big time save other than 8 4. So, 8 1 in this run is by far the easiest level in the whole run because all, quote unquote, all you have to do is just do a couple pipe jumps where I get very close to this pipe but I don't die or the plant. I think each of those jumps are around a two or a three frame window. That's not bad at all. Yeah. Compared to everything else, it isn't terrible. Yeah. Um, Everything's relative. But 8-1... That looks so easy. I could do that. <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> That's run right. Is there anything hard on this level? Um, Nothing compares to the other levels. So you see how I don't do a flagpole glitch there? It's the probably because of the frame down. roll, right? This is my sixth run. The it, well, it, it would have been extra difficult, but it wouldn't have even saved the same the frame roll, so you would have still started 8 2 on the same point, but with extra difficulty for no reason. Reducing consistency. You right? You can actually save a frame roll here with flagpole glitch, but there's more to it. So, oh? first of all, if you just like pause for a second, um, you know how you were saying earlier that I slow down on the stairs in 1 1 and 4 1? Yeah. Which that giving a consistent setup for it. Yeah. In 8-1, you can't do that. It's too slow. What you have to do, at the beginning of the level, you have to do a trick called a fast acceleration, where you hold, you buffer a left press and then instantly switch to right and a one-frame jump, which is so really frame one is and so kind of luck-based. So frame one is left, frame two is right, and then frame three is jump? Um, It's specifically... First frame left, second frame nothing, for some technical reasons, third frame right plus A, and then fourth frame right. And it has to be exactly that, nothing else. There's no other combinations that have ever been found to save a frame roll in 8 one except that very specific combination. If you... the only alternative... If you do all those inputs a frame late, or if you do a two frame jump, you can still back it up, but it's really stupid and even more luck beast. Um, so the the most reliable way is just doing those inputs. But the trouble with them is it's not like okay, time a frame perfect jump. It's do a very specific movement with a D pad on the button and just sort of hope it works. Yeah, that, there's a difference between frame perfect and oh, you have to do all these inputs superhumanly fast and perfect. Yeah. <laughs> So how many has, then, has eight one ever been done by humans to the frame roll? Oh yeah, a fair few people. I think maybe forty ish have done eight one just in an individual level run, which is a fair amount. And a few people have done it on runs. I actually two days ago saved a run that lost the four two frame roll. I saved it with the fast eight one frame roll. Um, and to get a four fifty four, that's what you'd have to do. You'd have to do eight one. All right, but so it's currently nine record. So basically, this is significantly easier than the four two, but significantly harder than anything else so far. Yeah. So in a future well, world record, you'd want to probably focus on the eight one much sooner than you'd ever focus on the the four two because the eight one frame rule, as hard as it is, it's more feasible than the four two frame rule. For the oh, for, yeah. for the the next step of progress from what your current level, basically. Yeah. Okay. So that 8-1 might be something we might see in the next like coming years.
yeah, probably pretty soon. Anyway, so we go from 8-1, which is the easiest level in the run. And it's easiest level into... right now. Soon to be the hardest Yeah, thing. right now. And Soon to be hardest. And then we go into 8-2, which going from the easiest to pretty much by far and away the hardest level. Th this, it's hard to see at first what's so tough about it. Because you do need to look into it quite finely, but you need to do a perfect clear over this pipe. So you see how close I get to that plant there? Yeah. And in order to do that, you need to do a frame perfect A release to land as early as possible, jump the frame you land on that brick block, a frame perfect A release to land on the pipe, and then another frame perfect jump to jump off it. And you have to slow down and speed back up perfectly, all in the span of half a second. So it's pretty ridiculous. And above that, you have to do a bullet bill glitch here, which you'll see is a quicker version of flagpole glitch, where yes, oh. it skips oh all of okay. it skips oh. all of the walking to the castle, Here's and it just ends immediately. Oh wow! Right. So the bullet okay. bill it just focus, skips focus, focus, extra animations, so it's like an extra frame roll strands. skipped, or or just a huge significant time increase. Focus. You ba you basically um, have to do the bill if you're competitive in speedrunning in this oh, game. That's like absolutely mandatory. Yeah. Yes. Although, there is an easier oh, version my. of okay. this trick where you don't do that absurd plant clear, and in fact, only this run and the previous record are the only two, um, yes. like, any percent PBs oh, ever to have that. Okay. Focus, but, focus, focus. I guess I should explain Bullet Bill Glitch, okay. if you want to pause. Yeah. The reason why this works, so with Flagpole Glitch, you're grabbing the pole really low, yeah. and that stops the flag from coming down. Here, because you bounce lower off enemies, he grabs the pole so low that the game can't push him up on top of the block and instead ejects him to the side. And the way the end of level cutscene works is that when Mario runs against a block, it starts counting down the timer. Because he's being ejected to the left, he's running right against the base of the flagpole, so it instantly starts counting down. And that. <laughs> Dan, the first time here, first time hearing all this stuff, it's like if you've never looked it up or studied it, you the first time ever hearing it, it's like overwhelming almost. <laughs> it's yeah. like, but it, it makes a lot of sense. It's just like exploiting the way the games are programmed. It's just dang, it, yeah. your first time ever hearing this, it's like, oh god. <laughs> and this trick, in fact, it saves so much time that despite the fact that you have to wait for the bullets on the stair. It still saves just over a full second. Oh god, over, that's a lot. If you're not doing this, it you have to do this to be competitive. Yes. Yeah. Oh. My. So I. Okay. All of the top fifty-ish times do bullet bill glitch. <laughs> yeah, you can't be. It's like trying to nail if wave dashing. You have to wave dash. Yeah. Um. And finally, eight three. You're sort of out of the craziness. It's nowhere near as hard as the previous level, but it's still pretty difficult. You have to do a frame-perfect jump here, so that you walk off the back lip of the pipe. This, um, I'll show at the end of the level. But what? this is a setup for flagpole glitch. Oh, you have to, it, because of sub-pixels, you have to be at a certain sub-pixel spacing for it to work. Yeah, and unlike 1-1 one, one, and 4-1, it doesn't line up perfectly, so you have to do an extra thing to line yourself up. I didn't actually so, the, I, was I have a question. The so, the, the flagpole okay. glitch thing at the end, it's it only works by sub pixels, which means that if you're just running to the right the whole g game, it's actually impossible. You have to do these slowdowns to yeah. slow down just enough that that the sub pixels are dividable, yes. so that it Come works. On. Come on. Yeah, Come on, and get this. Get because this. there's only about a half a pixel window for it to work. If you're just running along randomly, there's only a twenty percent chance. It will even be possible if you just had random sub pixels. So you have to do very precise inputs to line yourself up. Yeah, and uh, doing the twenty percent chance doesn't even save any time going into eight four because of frame rules, right? Yeah. And so you might as well take the, easy, more the easier route. So it's yeah. all about the consistency then. But the thing as well with eight three, if you go back a bit to the end of the level, you see how I end the level with two forty two on the timer. In this game. If you end with the last digit being a three or a six, fireworks. you'll have three or yeah, three or six fireworks. 
which will... Yes. I think Come three on. fireworks loses about a second, and six yes. loses yes. two or three. So naturally, you want to avoid that. Yeah. So the reason why I do that slow down earlier on is so that I don't get a 243, which would give three fireworks. Yeah, I heard about the fireworks. In fact, that was something I, I, I learned a very long time ago during like the five minute Mario speedrun stuff that happened like a decade ago or whatever, how long ago, super long oh, time yeah. ago. I heard that was like one of the earliest things I heard about how like one of the important things in the Mario speedrunning is to like avoid the fireworks. Yeah, I had a magazine that I read when I was about six or seven which look uh, around about when the first sub five happened and i remember it said it talked about the fireworks but it said nine on the time it would give nine fireworks which is just i don't know where they got that from but yeah i remember old magazines they used to say jigapuff's rest did nothing in smash 64 don't use this move it's <laughs> terrible and I, I i believed it for a time because I, I was just a kid who didn't know any better and had no faith in myself so i assumed the magazine <laughs> says it must be true <laughs> <laughs> then I later learned why it rest is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So at this point, I was tied with the previous record into 8-4. This was to the frame, entering on the same frame as the previous record, which was 455.430. And you'll see all of my time save comes from playing this level with the strategies I did close to perfection. So, and you'll see not later perfect, on. but a lot better than the previous record holder. Yeah, you could improve over what I did by going for more risky strats, but with what I went Because for, you're already is... so comfortable that you just wanted to close out and say, make sure, you, oh, hey, yeah. I got word record. Yeah. Because, you know, then in the future, you can, you know, as the future unfolds more, you're going to have to get riskier and riskier. But for now, you want to be able to be, say, hey, I had the word record at this point in time. So, of course, you're going to, you know, play it safe enough but still risky enough that you're going to beat the previous holder but not trying to beat tass yet yeah because you didn't think the risk award made sense you know and that, that that's that's a, that makes a lot of sense when you think of it in that in sense in terms that i'd probably do the same thing yeah you'll see that in 8-4 with what the 8-4 il record does is so insane i actually made a video about it but the strategies in that are mind-blowing. I can't comprehend how people do it. What, is it harder than 8-4 frame rule? Um, oh, 8-4 doesn't have Oh, oh sorry, sorry. I you... meant to say, is it harder than 4-2? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I would say beating the 8-4 AL record by one frame is probably comparable in difficulty to 4-2. So this is the the perfect eight four is comparable to the four two you were talking about earlier. Yeah, oh, and wow. this eight four you're about to see is maybe yes. I don't know the exact number, ten to fifteen Wait. frames off. Wait, hold hold up. I wanna I wanna ask. Um you said that the four two hasn't even been done by a human. So but the eight yeah. four has it has it been done by a human? I said improving the eight four record by one frame, so it's oh, about okay. to be there. But even oh, okay, now okay, it's okay, ridiculous. I see. Okay, anyway, I see. so here you do a pixel perfect frame yes. perfect wall jump. Yeah. Run of the mill stuff. Um, and I had a perfect wall jump there. Then, Dude, this at the start so of good. turnaround room. Like <laughs> if you go back to the start of turnaround, Dude, of the third room. So I'm sorry, what? Um, if you go back just after I got wall jump, you'll notice I do. I face left for a bit, yeah, then face do a left. jump and run to the right, which is what I was talking about in 8 1. And then you have to do another wrong warp here, where you scroll just past the pipe. Hold up, this jump, uh, this jump, this is faster than just run, walking out and running to the right. Yeah. Because for some I reason think... in Mario 1, jumping <laughs> makes you start faster than just running. Yeah. Uh, unlike real yeah. life. <laughs> Imagine if real life, <laughs> Olympic runners, hey, I'm going to jump first so that I can accelerate faster. Because that's kind of no, what Mario just... does, right? Imagine if they were just jumping backwards as well. They did the whole thing jumping backwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be honest, it's kind of funny because, like, I always felt as a kid that, like, instinctually it felt like doing the jump was faster. I never knew for sure if it was, but I've always felt like, why does this feel faster than just running on the ground? I felt like Mario's ground run is just so slow for, in this game for some reason. That jumping, yeah. jumping for some reason makes it actually go even faster. Does, does it matter if you're I, facing left or right? If you're... Well, if you're at full speed already, jumping on the ground doesn't actually make a difference. It's only your acceleration. Beginning. Yeah. If you face backwards and do a jump, he'll get to full speed quicker. And it's extra amplified here because he can't immediately get to full speed. You notice he can't just run to the right because there's a gap there. Wait, wait, I have a question. So, so uh, th this jump you did, 
Wait, you, from facing left? If you were fit, yeah. oh wait, you start. Why, why? Why do you have to face left? Why not just jump normally? Well, for some reason, I don't actually know why. I guess it's just programmed in. I don't know. But in this game, if he's facing backwards, he'll accelerate quicker. That that's so stupid and weird. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no. I have no idea. I don't know if that's an exploit or if it's just programmed it i genuinely don't know weird programming that's that. not understood yeah. but just it that's weird programming that's accepted but not even understood yeah okay it's like the flagpole glitch it's straight up programmed in i don't we know accept why. this is how it is even though we don't really yeah. understand it it do be like that anyway so you do a wrong warp here you s s run just past the pipe and then run backwards loading in the water section so if i was to go down this pipe without doing that wrong warp he would go back to the beginning of 8-4 which is slow because you want to go forward <laughs> yeah i remember doing um, that as a kid like i would just put me to the beginnings of the level and i was like i just the first time i played this game i was like man i'm going back to the beginning of the level and it was like punishing me for going down every pipe but it's like ugh. but then i guess yeah. they didn't think oh <laughs> what if the player runs past the the pipe when they designed the game they was thinking oh he's gonna go down as soon as pipe they weren't thinking well, what if he runs past the pipe and then he goes back <laughs> So what what but, what's uh, normally happens in a like what if you were to play a playthrough without abusing like these glitches like let's call so, this a glitch what would normally happen you just keep running to right and go down a different pipe yeah there just to the right past that gap there's yeah. a, there's a different pipe there that you would go down which is what the glitchless record does which was actually broken the other day by GTA's anyway oh, okay so the intended playthrough when you're like your first time ever playing the game you, you've never seen the game before. Most people would probably go take this and go to the beginning of the level, or they'd go to the next pipe and go there. But because of the way yeah. this game was programmed, and you know the old-fashioned, let's rush a game out. I don't know coding very well. Programming is there's like an <laughs> invisible line around here, or so that decides. Okay, the left half will go here, the right half will go here. Yeah, there's some invisible line trigger. here, and you just want to go just far enough and then go back. And that's that's actually um, really precise because you have that's something you have to practice and safe state practice over and over to make sure you're doing just enough because you want to be faster than your comp competitors but not slow enough that you get revert back to the first pipe because that then that's a reset yeah exactly and what's actually interesting here this turnaround the run back to the pipe was completely perfect if i'd gone one pixel further to the left run dead back to the beginning um and the fast acceleration at the start of the room i think was only one frame from perfect now, at this point, I was actually on dot two pace, and I played this water section safe. Um, what would have been risky? And... That looked perfect. What, 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 what could have been better? This is like AT. Um, at the very end, if you touch down, he loses a tiny bit of speed. Yeah, so you lose so a frame. You can you can sort of go straight into the pipe. I lost one frame here just to play safe. Because you didn't want to hit the fire. I'm, yeah, and more importantly, easy, bonk the easy. pipe and lose all momentum. And then you just jump through Bowser, and now, then you win. How do these Bowser interactions work? Is it truly random? And I heard that these aren't even like what the hitboxes look like. Because, man, dude, I swear, when I was younger, I, I was always thinking that like I avoided it when I thought I should have got hit, and then other times I got hit when I thought I should have avoided it. Yeah, the I swear hitboxes these hitboxes are weird. <laughs> the hitboxes, especially if the fireball on the left, the fire breath, I'm pretty sure the hitbox for that is one pixel large. It's tiny, but um, the Bowser patterns are determined by what frame you get to Bowser on. So if you arrive at the same frame there every time, you'll get the same pattern. I don't know how that calculated, but what at the top level you do, you'll say, okay, I want to get to 455.3, for example. Yeah. So you'll write down whatever like six or seven valves of patterns are in the range of possible times you could get and just naturally through practicing eight for a lot you'll end up having them memorized so i could tell at the start of the room based on the movements of the hammer brew i knew exactly what pattern i was getting and therefore i knew i had to jump early here to not die to bowser as now, opposed to jumping normally so let's say that you're you get to this bridge area like this bridge area on a certain Frank, like you're, you're you're tied at the same same Mario position every time, right? Yeah. Is Bowser always doing the exact same thing, or is it like one of six things? If you're on the same frame, there will do the exact same thing. So there have been cases, for example, where two people have tied each other to the frame, and they've got the exact same pattern, and that's how runs are actually retimed. There are just spreadsheets and websites with 
photos of each different person that correspond to the time so what you should do is uh what so the next stage of like tr somebody trying to beat your world record uh by like a frame or two frames you know because that's like you know realistically like what yeah. the next level would be unless you're they're doing crazy frame rule stuff um they would have to see um you know because the next if they're trying to beat your record they're probably going to go down in order of difficulty like okay what's the next easiest thing i can do to just make a quick world record real quick and it'd probably be like yeah. okay let's save the one frame that he didn't on the water section in eight four or something and then you know yeah. when that gets optimized it's like you do even crazier and stuff it, like eight one and stuff but they have to check what bowser does yeah additionally you can just do even more of those fast accelerations the backwards jumps in eight four so the i do one the 84AL record does like, I think it does like seven, because <laughs> some of them sort of add on to each other, but it does some crazy amount of fast excels that you can never expect to do in a proper run. So but like, I could see someone getting a record with at least three. So in your opinion, like, what's the next order of difficulty? Like, if you're trying to beat your run and you don't care about how much you beat it, you're just trying to say new world record. What are you trying to beat? Probably the water section on 84 or something. Yeah, if someone wanted to beat this, m this run, the 8-4 is at the point where it's so good that you'd probably need to do something more. You couldn't really just go for a cleaner 8-4 with the same strats because it's already really clean. So I think if someone was to try and beat this, then at the very least, do a fast excel at the start of 8-4, which can save up to 5 frames, if only just to give a bit more leeway so they can oh. play the rest of it. Oh, 5 frames kind of huge. Safer. How hard is that? Yeah. Um, because you don't need to do it perfectly, like say an eight one, it's not crazy hard. But when you're an eight four, you're pretty nervous. So yeah. it's more a matter of like, okay, just don't choke. Yeah. So it's more scary than just than actually hard. Yeah, it also depends what your goals are. Is, is your goal all or nothing world record or not, or is it let's get a let's let's, let's be top ten. It, it depends yeah. on it depends on what your personal goals are. Are you, are you playing it safe, or are you going YOLO all or nothing world record or rip? Yeah, no one would really do that first room excel pretty much unless they're going for a record. How so much? Just isn't needed. How often has humans done the fast excel eight four? Has it been um, done like one time, a hundred like, times? What like in PBs and personal just, bests? Yeah, either or, in general or that. In general, like tens, hundreds of thousands of times. Oh, oh, in, oh okay. In, so that's <laughs> definitely something that's going to be focused yeah. on in the it, near future. Like, if you but, were to try to optimize this further, that'd be something you'd like just lab and yeah. practice over and over. In in runs, though. Yeah, nervousness, of course. I don't know if any person has ever finished an any percent PB with a first room fast excel. Actually, I don't know if I, my mind's just going crazy, but I don't think that's ever happened in a proper any percent room. And even then, the 8-4 on this run was only one frame from the fastest it's ever been done in a world record any percent run. So this was, like, pretty quick. Yeah, so <laughs> when do you think this would be beaten? Ever? Um, This will definitely be beaten. Yeah, this yeah. will be beaten soon. I'd be surprised yeah. if it stands for two months. And the reason for that is I've just been doing attempts to save a few frames in 8-4 with, again, that first room fast excel. Yeah. Um, another guy called Lukuki has been doing attempts at it, another person called Nolmi. So the game's very active right now, Yeah. but the main thing is that 454 is on the bounds of happening, and that's really important because the TAS is also a 454. There is no 453 yet. Yeah. So once 454 happens, it's the final second barrier. I heard the task cheats. Result... Like it does uh, <laughs> a left and right input on like the same frame, oh. which you can't do on NES controller and on so, the beginning of certain levels. That is a thing. The left plus right task gets a 454.03, but that doesn't the count though rules... because you can't do no. that on a controller. Like you it, literally it, cannot do it on a controller. No, it's not comparable to what humans do. But because of frame rules, it doesn't actually save any time except for eight four. So the the task that doesn't do left plus right gets, I think, a 454.26. So about, if, in fact, it's exactly three frame rules quicker than this run. Yeah. But that, that's more absurd than it even, like, sounds if you haven't, like, actually played it. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> like, that's, no, no one's tying that. But you can get pretty yes. close. <laughs> and I heard that, uh, I, I, I remember watching this after you posted on Twitter I and it was like, I did it. 
Yes. Wasn't it at, at the beginning Wait, of the run? It's like right. your your mom was calling Wait, you in for dinner, and you're like, five. Oh just yeah. Give me five minutes. <laughs> did, did you say something yeah. like that, or did, was that my imagination? Like, I remember. <laughs> This was going to be the last run of the stream, because I usually stream, end, and then eat dinner. This was going to be the last run, and I got record on this run, so I had to go downstairs afterwards and be like, okay, just give me five like, minutes. delay for a bit? <laughs> yeah. Did you, look, wait, did you say, give me five minutes, or is... Because that's really funny. I, I think... I think I went downstairs and I was like, um, I kind of just got record, can you just give me, like, a bit of time? Yeah. That, that's also, actually really probably, funny though. I should probably explain the timer, which says 456 point. Oh, yeah, 456 point. Oh, yeah, it's not accurate. Because uh, you, it's not you accurate. Just, yeah, because you were just pressing the button. You were just clicking it, and then, you know, know obviously you're going to have to measure it frame by frame with tools and yeah. other things. But you just. That was just me <laughs> yeah, pressing yeah. a button on my keyboard. Yeah, Thankfully, you just press the button just to get like a rough idea. I split the rough. Yeah. Wait, I didn't see my split, goddammit. And here, what I was doing, I was. I was playing the second really quest of this, reaction. where once you beat the game, I feel more um, so you can keep like going and some enemies work differently, I, I can, like, and there's just a sep separate category for this. Oh like, yeah, I actually did that. Um, I remember when I was younger, uh, I, I did the, the second quest, and I was looking for oh, it, I was like, oh my god, I can't wait for the second quest, and then all they did is change the Goombas to these Beatles. Yeah. And I was like, this is so stupid. <laughs> uh, I, I was thinking to myself as a kid, even I could tell that was that's a, I, that, that's a scam. Man, that, that, that doesn't count. That doesn't count. Yeah, not even a world nine. Oh my. <laughs> oh my. Like I was gosh. expecting one thing different. Not okay. Goombas are now Buzzy Beetles, <laughs> or yeah. whatever they're called. <laughs> um. So what made you keep running here? <laughs> Try to get a second world record what, real quick. What, keep that momentum. Yeah, both both quests world record. I think the first part of it gets a four fifty six dot one. Oh, something. you're just like okay, made world record. <laughs> Let's and yeah. then there's like a bonus level. That's let's so let's see if I can cool. make two world records real quick, just yeah. to, just to be extra hype, but like not actually um, expecting I, it to happen. Um, I was already a second ahead of that one, so I just had to not die to a brew and eat three, and then I died to a brew. Yeah, but that, that wasn't the original goal. But it's like when you got yeah. it down the first time, it's almost the same thing, the exact same thing. This is it even anything different the second time? Um, give me a not I just really. There's not a whole lot. <laughs> I feel like it's the exact same inputs to get the second record because the Goombas and Buzzy Beetles. I feel like it doesn't even matter. Yeah, that's that's funny. You basically oh, let's just be perfect twice. But that that's actually really funny. <laughs> anyway, oh, so best in the game. I wonder what that's about. Hi guys, me. <laughs> Damn, I'm just kidding. All right, no, um, but for real, uh, this is fun. Uh, learning learning a lot about a lot about this game was uh, very really fun. Guys, don't uh, make sure to follow Miniland on uh, Twitter and YouTube. Mini Land uh, three 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 on YouTube and Twitter. Make sure to give him a follow, uh, especially if you're interested in staying up to date on Mario stuff. And with that said, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and let us let me know what you think in the comments below if you want more of these types of videos and whatnot. And I'll see you guys later.